Good evening. I'd like to call the special meeting to order at 7.01. Tonight we have Lynn Conway, Fred Dykeman, myself, Ben Filbert, Charles or Chuck Sheehan, and Ryan Deasy as our board. I'm sorry. No. Is that better? I just got to lean into it. Okay. Um, do I need to reintroduce everybody? Did everybody hear it? And we've been informed by our select woman that once we are in the building, we can take our masks off if you're comfortable being six feet apart. Correct, June? You must wear it entering the building, and then it's up to your conscience. Is there a motion on the wonderful minutes that were presented? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstain from Lynn. You are gone. Thank you. Mr. Staff. Yeah, first up our first up are the administrative review items, item five D. Five D one is a request for a ninety day extension to record the final plans for approved subdivision T Z twenty one oh six S D and G P P four ninety Al Harvey Road LLC. This was a subdivision in Groundwater Protection Permit application for a two lot lease subdivision at 506 Isle Harvey Road, Stonington, Assessor's Map 112, Lot 3, Lot 2B Zone, RR80. Um, this was a subdivision that was approved by the Commission back in May. Um, it's had several stipulations that still had to be done prior to reporting the final plans. Um, state statutes allow up to two 90 day extensions to file the final plans with the town clerk. Um, they've already been granted one, so this is the second one that they're asking for, which would uh, which would be up February 23rd. Next. Next year. So, so this is not uh, moved forward by February, then it just lapses and we start right, right. Yeah. Has anything been done on that? It has, I think, you know, the, the final plans have been modified, but they need more time to uh, there's easements involved and things like that that they had to get approved. Do you hear a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Item 5D2, 21213ZON, Unicorn Project LLC. Zoning permit application for the interior and exterior remodel of the former Friendly's restaurant building for a different restaurant in Yamo. Property located at 247 and 251 Greenville Ave, Mystic. Assessor's map 171, block 1, lot 1, zone TC80. Um, with this, the applicants are looking to repurpose the former Friendly's restaurant as a new restaurant. Um, the number of seats won't increase. There's no changes to this site layout that are proposed or the parking lot. Um, the building changes are just uh, repainting the building eliminating two small dormers, restructuring the cupola, repainting existing materials um, in the existing signs will just be the same size. Um, it's located in the TC80 tourist commercial zone. There was a special use permit for a restaurant with liquor service granted in 1979. Um, the initial plans were to replace and raise the center of the building to do more intense changes that triggered an architectural design review board review. So this went to them. Um, they had some comments and wanted more information, but they downscaled the plans. So they're really just repainting the building, doing a few small things. They withdrew the ADRB application because it doesn't require that anymore. Um, and uh, Mr. Pettis is the engineer. On this, if there were any specific questions, Have they indicated what the signage changes will be? I know you said the size will be the same, but how about lighting, etc.? Um, no changes to that, and I don't think they're internally lit now. Thank you. So, yes. Keith, I think this is for you, maybe for the applicant, uh, and it may not even be a proper question for the special permit. Uh, for a restaurant that was 
conflict of service was granted in 79. But that was a while back, and, and I'm curious that even though the seating hasn't changed, has the criteria and the regulation changed for required parking? Um, I'm not sure if the standard has changed since 1979, but the special, the original special use permit, <coughs> excuse me, is still valid. So, um, if it is non-conforming, they're able to maintain that legally. Okay. Any other questions? No. We hear one. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, item five three. Uh, Spruce Meadows LLC zoning permit application to remove the requirement for fencing around the recreation area and approve a proposed 20 by 20 extension of the emergency access drive with a change of material to concrete property located at 86-88 South Broad Pawkatuck Assessor's Map 25 Block 1 Lot 4 Zone LS5 um, as the second building for Spruce Ridge um, is nearing completion and will be occupied soon. There's seeking two minor changes here. And the first one is elimination of this fence around a recreation area on the approved lands. The zoning regulations require that a certain amount of land is set aside as a recreation area. The original plans had a line that showed fenced as required. Our regulations don't require it to be fenced. Um, it, a fence would have no purpose since it's surrounding an area that's also grass and there's a fence right behind it which is the property line fence and there's a picture of it in uh, page 12 of the staff report of what it looks like now where you can see an additional fence wouldn't make sense there um, the second change is extension of that eastern emergency access drive by 20 feet this is something that the fire the fire district is requiring um, so they can get their trucks there in case of an emergency and due to supply chain issues they're requesting that it be concrete rather than grass pavers and um, there's grass pavers already there for what was built but they're asking that it be concrete for the last 20 feet um, because it's elevated from the road you really won't see the change from the road unless you are up there is there any concern about trying to keep the kids out of the parking lot to have a fence around the recreation area? I mean, it may not be required, but... Um, you know, the owners didn't don't feel it's, it's necessary there. I don't know if anyone's here to work this application. Right, right. And it really wasn't, in the approved plans, it really wasn't presented in that way or really discussed as a fenced area. It just said as required on the plan. Um, it might lower their slightly right, right. cost, but it might be required by 
What would you be thinking, like a three foot fence? Well, uh, yeah. uh, if it, it's just, just, it seems to me if it's not required, you can hardly turn it down. But it seems to me that we want to encourage the landlord to find some way to keep the two year olds out from under the, the wheels of SUVs. You know what I mean? They, they, they move pretty fast. I guess I think we approve the change, but I encourage them to think about the new support here sometimes. Oh, we got it along the front of the park. Yeah. Connecting to the white fence in the background? I think that would be a huge fence in the back. That's not good. Not a problem. Yeah. I like that idea. Along the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, something that would be integrated into the perimeter fence. The hedge or something. And that's within our parameters, Steve. We can go ahead and ask for a Yeah, I think especially with the recommendation, you know, it makes sense to have your concern on record there. It's subject to the staff discretion on, on review of those. Yeah, and you know, it's not a fence like that, isn't something we really would even have a permit for. Um, we have a gating at one or two gates. Mm -hmm. At least one. Yeah, they would need a building permit for in their fence that small. Correct. So, what's the summary? So, uh, the summary is that we're going to recommend through a letter, but we're not going to ensure or it's up to the developer. Yeah, it would just be a stipulation that. Encourages them to look at it or consider it. Yeah, I'd say parallel to the parking lot, sidewalk there, at least three feet high. And it does not have to connect up to the white fence. Is that what we're saying? It could be an open. So it would be an open. Yeah. Just some yeah. visual. Yeah. Very walkable. Yeah. Way up on the but, you know, just a thought. I mean, I don't think we can turn it down, but, but I think we ought to suggest it. Think about it. Okay. Take care of the kids. Have you composed a sentence or two? Vision encourages a fence for small children. A fence to keep small children on the parking lot. Maybe something to the effect of <clears throat> the commission encourages a barrier between. It could be a landscape. Open yeah. space yeah. in the parking yeah. lot. Keeping in mind keeping in mind the current use for um, you know uh small children. Good idea. Right? Okay. We just need to have a motion as uh, oh, yes. Second. Well, this is new stipulation. Yeah. Recommendation. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And um, item 6A, old business. That's the uh, Coastal Area Management application on Greenberg Road. I recommend tabling that in the next meeting as we wait. And that is, uh, that is it, except for the public hearings. All right, thank you, Keith. So, for tonight's public hearing, it's the same Ryan Deasy, Chuck C, myself, Ben Hilbert, Fred Beekman, and Lynn Conway. Did we have a sign up sheet at the front door, Keith? Yeah, the table back there. There'll be a sign up sheet at the front door. 
the process will be is the applicant will present their format what they would what they intend to do. Then we'll hear from anybody who's in favor of it, then those who are opposed, general comments, and then there is a rebuttal by the applicant. The board will ask questions, close the hearing, and go to a vote. We have to read the saw, please. Okay. Pursuant to the general statutes of the state of Connecticut, revision of 1958, and all amendments thereto, and pursuant to the zoning regulations of the town of Stonington, Connecticut, the Planning and Zoning Commission hereby gives notice that it will hold a public hearing at the Stonington Board of Education District Office, 40 Field Street, Pawcatuck, Connecticut, on Tuesday, October 5, 2021, at 7 p.m. on the following application. First application is PZ2123 SUP Coastal Masonic Temp Temple Corporation of Connecticut, Inc. Special Use Permit Application for a 2014 Square Foot Addition to the Masonic Temple Building with Associated Parking, Landscaping, and Drainage. Property located at 637 Pequot Trail, Stonington. Assessor's Map 72, Block 1, Lot 11, Zone RR80. Uh, for the record, uh, <coughs> Sergio Terenzia with Terenzia and Associates. Office is located at 99 Mechanic Street, Pawcatuck, Connecticut. Um, I'm here <coughs> this evening on behalf of the Coastal Masonic Lodge um, uh, for their proposed addition and special use permit. Uh, with me this evening, um, who also prepared uh, some of the plans and exhibits that are uh, you, you will see this evening uh, is Rebecca Nolan, landscape architect, and Julia Leeming, uh, art project architect, as well as uh, Ted Ladwig, um, counsel for the uh, for the applicant. Uh, the plans and the uh, application before you this evening was prepared uh, by my office um, under my responsible charge, and I am a licensed um, registered uh, professional engineer in the state of Connecticut. Um, just to orient you, um, I'm going to start with GIS map, uh, which I can uh, I can pull your attention to the to the screen. Um, as mentioned uh, by your chair and um, in the application, uh, this property is located at 673 Pequot Trail, um, map 72, block one, lot 11. I'll highlight that for you right there. Um, and property owned by the Coastal Masonic Temple Corporation. Uh, just to give you some orientation, uh, it's on the south side of Pequot Trail. Um, property uh, to the south is relatively undeveloped. Um, property of, uh, I believe it's uh, the Sergio Frankie, off of Sergio Frankie Drive, uh, Eva Frankie. Uh, wife of my late namesake, uh, Sergio Frankie, and uh, property to the um, uh, to the west. Abutted by residential property to the west, um, a large property as a re reference to the south, the residential kind of farm property, um, as well as to the to the to the east, and uh, it is the residential uh, farm kind of farm property also to the north. So relatively rural rural area, and our subject parcel being that of the uh, Coastal Masonic Temple, uh, with the single building uh, located uh, located on it. Uh, so from here, I'm going to pull up the existing condition survey that was actually not prepared by my office, uh, prepared by Bob Sanner. Uh, but to just to orient you uh, on the site here, uh, here's, here's the property. Uh, there is a uh, wetland, freshwater wetland uh, on the southern portion of the rear of the property. Um, the structure, uh, the existing structure 
as you can see from Pequot Trail, I'm sure you've driven by numerous times. Uh, there's a gravel parking lot uh, to the north with two curb cuts, um, generally for entrance and exit, but both of them are wide enough for uh, to, be, to be used as inlet and outlet. Um, <clears throat> there's a relatively cleared field uh, kind of area to the east on the property, and uh, to the south there is a, a septic, an existing septic system, uh, which was actually relatively recently approved and um, and installed and conformed for the uh, for the lodge. <coughs> um, there's also a an existing well in the front of the property. However, they have uh, this is the if I can zoom in here the existing well in the front of the property, which is going to be abandoned part of this project. And actually, the new well is uh, in the process of being I believe it's been tested, and they're in the process of connecting it. Uh, to the lodge um, and abandoning the, the other well. Um, so the reason we're here in front of you this evening, um, let me pull up my site plan. It's for a uh, special use permit for an addition to the building, as well as some associated improvements, including stormwater, um, as I mentioned, a new well, um, <clears throat> septic will remain substantially the same. Uh, new parking area uh, configuration uh, and, and other items like dumpster pad, uh, things that to make it to, to, to put the property uh, in, in better conformance with the with the use that we're proposing. Um, so, as is indicated, the proposed addition you can see on the east side of the building. Excuse me too far there. Um, it's about 2,000 square foot in footprint. Um, Julio and Rebecca will go through much more of the, the more aesthetically pleasing aspects of, of the design and but I'll uh, give you a little bit of a, a technical background. Um, as part of the project we are formalizing uh, some of the parking in the front, uh, some uh, ADA uh, spaces and uh, a big uh, one of the one of the more significant reasons for this addition is currently all of the um, the, the space that is used for uh, informal kind of I guess recreational meeting space um, is downstairs in the basement of the uh, current facility, the existing building on the left side here. Um, it has it doesn't have any it does not have compliant ADA access. Um, some of the aging members have to come around and use the side door, which is not ideal, uh, given it's all gravel and it's all gravel parking surfaces. Um, there's also a kitchen uh, on the lower level, so the formal meeting space is, is at ground level as you come from the front, um, and uh, then uh, they, they meet informally and share meals together, uh, typically downstairs, and have the kitchen uh, to bring in food to keep it warm, and uh, mostly everything is catered here. They don't they don't prepare meals in this facility. So as such, uh, they wanted to have a better uh, ADA compliant flow between the two spaces all on one level. So that's what this uh, addition is also going to uh, provide. <clears throat> There'll be uh, main level access between the addition, but also you'll bring your attention there's a ADA ramp um, leading right from the ADA spaces up across the front of the, prop, uh, of the building around to the side and uh, into the covered porch area. You'll see what the building plans, uh, you'll see how, the, how that flow and how that works and translates to the outside to the inside. There's also another entrance on the side here um, with, with sidewalk uh, connecting it to uh, so that this parking uh, on the side here is much, uh, will provide uh, much better access into that space. So for when they don't have formal meetings or they're using the, this, this uh, building for other than their own use um, because we are permitting this as a community um, a, a uh, <coughs> excuse me as a uh, community center um, that uh, it, there's other folks that will be organizations uh, that, that will be using it and there's actually a letter that was submitted as part of the application which identifies those organizations which the coastal uh, Masonic uh, lodge um, allows to use the space. Um, they're very civic 
civic-minded and oriented group, um, much similar to a, a rotary. Um, so they, it's very important that they, they allow that the space is accommodating to um, other, other community organizations. Um, so as I noted, uh, there'll be uh, paved parking in the front. We've rearranged the parking on the site to be a little bit more formal. Um, the parking will line up in front of the addition, um, uh, and you'll see with the elevations why that makes sense. But mainly we wanted to preserve this, the front of this building um, because although this isn't um, a, an, on a historic register, um, it's, it, the, the building has a lot of history. I'm sure many people have driven by it and seen it. Uh, you, you, and you'll see in the photos, there's, uh, you know, there's signage in the front of the building, um, and we wanted to maintain the integrity of that building with the addition and didn't, and didn't lose it. And then Julia will go into that a little bit more. So there's formal uh, paved parking in the front. Um, we've got less formal parking, crushed stone parking around the sides of the building. Um, typically, uh, there's about 25 to 30 members on any given uh, meeting. Um, that meet on a regular basis once a month. Um, so as far as the uh, the parking goes, um, excuse me, sorry about that, um, we anticipate most of the folks are going to park in the front and use this these spaces over here. Um, we got about 22 spaces on the side, another six in the front, and then uh, for larger events and for, to accommodate, um, you know, the, the more periodic and, and less uh, frequent events, is uh, the overflow parking spaces. We have another 10 on the side here, and then some overflow parking in the front, um, which will remain um, uh, just a, we'll probably do that in not a, not a formal gravel. It'll be some kind of grass paved system where it'll still be stabilized, but less formal and, and, and still be part of the landscape. And Rebecca will go into that a little bit, a little bit more. Um, as far as the stormwater management goes, uh, these plans have been reviewed by the town engineer. Um, we are uh, providing a stormwater detention basin uh, in the rear of the property um, before it uh, discharges to the wetland. Um, we're providing catch basins <coughs> in, the, um, in the driveway um, that are offline with deep sumps. Um, town engineer, we've met, uh, we've, we've been meeting periodically. He is very much um, attuned to uh, low impact development technologies and trying to uh, handle uh, first flush of runoff and take care of pollutants and sediments prior to getting to wetlands. Um, so we heeded his, uh, his advisement and uh, we put a little bit more robust system in, um, which was approved, which was consented by him, as well as uh, we, we also obtained a, a wetlands permit um, for this design. Um, we need uh, we meet all the uh, zoning requirements or no no zoning relief is needed um, dumpster pad with enclosure um, as I mentioned uh, the new well um, and we have submitted to ledge light health district for a suitability determination on the existing system um, it's important to note that this addition is not to accommodate additional membership this is to accommodate the existing membership the uh, the, the masons aren't looking um, and you know, in, in drastically increasing their membership by increasing the space, it's really to be more accommodating. The space in the basement will actually be turned into storage, and the kitchen will be abandoned. Uh, the new space will be more accommodating, better ADA access and, and flow for the, for them in between spaces, and it will have a kitchen as well, um, but mostly for uh, keeping food. Uh, you know, mo uh, their meals are pretty much catered. Uh, no, they don't go there and, and have. Um, no one's really cooking there, so they'll bring food in. Just need a place to warm it, plate it, and, and put it out um, for the in, in the space. Um, there's uh, no no flood considerations on this uh, property. Um, pretty much all the standard uh, maintenance uh, will be taking place. We have operation and maintenance plans for the stormwater, uh, for the parking lot, uh, things like snow removal, uh, fertilizer use. Uh, pretty much all standard. No hazardous materials on the site. Um, nothing that you wouldn't see in a regular household. Um, with that, unless there's any uh, questions for me, um, we can uh, go through the rest of the presentation. Whatever pleases the commission. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you uh, indicate that there be no increased use of this facility uh, beyond what it is currently used for? It's not going to be rented out for other uses in that place? currently rented out to, no, I should say, some, I don't know if they do um, rentals per se, but they let other organizations use the facility now, and it would accommodate the same capacity of their periodic meetings and then uh, allowing other uh, people to come in and use it as well. I have no uh, thought that the usage of the property would be increased in a significant way. No. Indicated that Ledge Light is considering whether the system is adequate. Yeah, yeah. Then in correspondence with the Sanitarium, um, and that we have a uh, application pending for uh, suitability of, of the system. But considering there's no changes to the use, we've issued a letter to them identifying such. Um, we're just waiting for them to uh, issue a, uh, issue that permit, and we'd be happy to make it conditional upon uh, the. You haven't the added bathrooms then. I'm sorry? You haven't added bathrooms? No. There's, uh, well, the addition does have bathrooms, correct. Yeah, but I don't, uh, yes, yeah, so we, we are adding, yes, there will be additional bathrooms. Yep. I, I don't see uh, a light plan. Is there a plan to add light to the parking lot at all? I don't know if we submitted a lighting plan or if it was Wait, that up to check that. There, there aren't any lights now. Yeah. I, I don't know if they're required uh, because you're changing the parking lot, um, but I'm, I'm not seeing a plan as part of the submission. I don't believe, I know it's a requirement. We requested. <laughs> that one was uh, submitted with the application. Um, I do know that the, the building will be, there'll be lights on the building, um, and uh, given the size of the parking lot, that may be adequate for the parking, but it may require additional lights. So, uh, I'm just going to say that this is a pretty dark area of the park trail. And so the lighting would probably have more of an impact than the change in the building itself from you know, passers by, neighbors, etc. So I think that lighting plan is very important okay. um, as to what the requirement is. Maybe that's something that keep can elaborate on. What was said about it here? But, I mean, could it be something addressing the stipulation where the light of the plans would be by staff if you want to go in that direction? We're at a pretty remote location. I don't think there will be any issues with uh, light shed onto adjacent properties. Uh, typically, we have a lighting plan that shows uh, photometrics, uh, which identify that all lighting will all be do down, um, uh, dark sky compliant, all full cutoff, and only necessary for the safety of the patrons. So if it pleases the commission to, uh, to condition it upon that, and they will uh, feel confident in staff to approve it as such we would be open to that. And you're not thinking of any kind of spotlights or anything like that? It's, it's more just your <clears throat> down, down facing lighting for safety? Yeah, I mean, most, most of the meetings take, care, take place in the uh, late afternoon and evening, so just enough for safety in the parking lot. And uh, would there be hours to that? 
um, as far as the hours of the who, of the lighting. Oh, we could, yeah. Typically, we'll either put them on a timer or um, uh, they're, they're with uh, they're with photo overlay sensors, so they go off. Uh, you know, at dusk. But they wouldn't be on all night. Uh, some I know. I'm, I'm trying to recall now. If you drive by, if there's a if there is a, ever a light on, but we could. Um, Provision that we would have any other questions? Uh, or we can continue on to this? Another one? Just one. Yeah. And I think I know the answer, but the existing well um the uh, when you say the existing well the well that's currently yeah i'll try to i'll try that's sure it's, it's the well that's located at the northeastern corner, corner of the, the existing building mm -hmm. no i don't believe there's any issue with it but it um it does not conform with the location of a septic system okay so it's the standoff distance to the because it doesn't look like the proposed one is any further away than the existing there should be a separation on that well um typically it's i believe 75 feet 70, 75 yeah. yeah it looks like it's 75 feet but the existing one does too we're putting in, uh, I should note this, that uh, we did have a proposed grease trap put, put in, and there's a building store that we're adding there, so it is too close to those components. Okay, got it. That, that makes sense. And you said that they did have a water quality testing. I don't like that. Okay. No, I don't know if that is that. Yes, um, Ledgeway won't approve the suitability without the, the, uh, the, the new well uh, testing, and I just, I believe, I just got those. A day or two ago, um, the testing results in the past. Thank you. Okay. No, no further questions. Brian? Thank you, Thank you. Um, I don't know who's coming up next, but it'll be Rebecca and Julia. You guys have decided yet. Okay. Okay. They're a package deal. Good evening, um, Rebecca Nolan, Landscape Architect, for the record. Um, Julia and I are going to be going through this uh, slideshow uh, together, so each time that we come in and out, we'll just say our names for the record um, so you guys can keep track. Um, I'm going to just start by saying that we put together this presentation for um, the Architecture Review Board. It was um, the second time that this project went to Architecture Review Board um, and the purpose of, of going back to them was to address some of their concerns um, that were related to the parking layout and some of the, um, the traffic circulation coming in and out um, as well as some landscaping um, and screening issues that hadn't been addressed in the original plan. So I believe this is the first time um, you're seeing this presentation. Um, so I'll turn it over to Julia for now, and then we'll we'll go back and forth. Thank you. Thank you again, Julia Leeming, um, the architect on the project. And on this on this board, what's important? You, you already have the context concerns there, the location. Um, but th this is the existing building, which was built in 1933. And as Sergio said, um, it's a modest building, but there's something iconic and historic and um, special about it. And I think the, the in initial design, which none of us were involved in, didn't respect the existing building, I think, as much as the Architectural Design Review Board had hoped, and certainly as much as, as we are trying to do now. Um, so the, the one thing I'll note here is if you look at the front door, so this is the existing entrance, um, does not have any kind of coverage from the elements and the, the first floor elevation is actually up here. So 
it's a split level. So as soon as you enter the building, you have to go up a series of stairs. So it is not in any way accessible to a person with any kind of mobility issues. And that was um, really the impetus for the addition to the building. And the only other thing I'll note is that this existing sign, you'll see we've, we've um, repurposed it for the second entrance to, um, to the addition, or the second entrance to the building to the addition and the rest of the signage we are hoping to um, reuse. And this is the existing sign right now on Pequot Trail. Um, just a few couple notes about materials. It's existing red cedar shingles um, and an exposed concrete foundation, very straightforward in its, its material palette. And then there are these, um, the corner boards are expressed with the white trim on the side. Um, I'll let you go. Thank you, Julia. Rebecca Nolan. Um, Sergio has gone through most of this plan. I just wanted to make note that um, there are some trees on the property that we would like to preserve. Um, in the in the front, there's some evergreen trees uh, that we'd be leaving. There's also some rock outcroppings, um, and that's why the parking configuration uh, for overflow parking is the way um, it is to kind of accommodate those uh, existing. Um, geological features. Um, you can see that the, the tree line along the eastern side, um, we're trying to really hold that tree line as much as possible. Um, so that, you know, we're, we're really proposing the parking area to go where the open lawn space is, um, you know, staying out of the wetland area, and then um, just providing, um, you know, there's, there's not really an existing buffer along either one of the, um, the side side setback. So along the east and the west side, um, we're proposing adding um, some significant buffer there. Um, this is the proposed site plan. Um, also what you saw from Sergio, just with um, maybe a little bit more color um, call out. Um, you can see what I'm, I'm speaking about in the uh, upper right hand corner of the screen where there's some rock outcroppings. We have three overflow parking spaces in that area. Um, we're proposing a dumpster that can be easily picked up um, and, uh, you know, close enough to the building. Um, the parking area, 22 spaces, that would be the area that Sergio mentioned would be in um, crushed stone, with the main parking area um, along the frontage um, being um, the paved area. Um, 20 foot setbacks on um, for the side yards for planting. So we're showing, you know, putting in some trees, uh, buffer trees at uh, six feet height um, at time of um, insulation. We're also noting that there's already um, some utility poles in that area. So, you know, plants that can accommodate, um, you know, staying away from the existing wires. Um, we're also uh, observing the septic system that uh, has just gone in, so we're trying to keep any new plantings and any real uh, construction work out of that area. Um, just a, another note on the trees that you see surrounding the new parking area with 22 spaces. Those are 40 feet on center. Um, they're selected from the, um, from the plant list uh, that Stone Engine provides. Um, and there is, as Sergio pointed out, a propane tank that's uh, towards the bottom of that parking area. Um, it really is, there's not much to buffer there. It's going to be a very small um, tank that's sticking up. So we've, we've provided a little bit of screening there just from the parking lot. Um, and then really around the building is just meant to be um, low maintenance plantings. Um, I can jump to the um, architecture really quick and we can go back. I have a planting plan with a little bit more detail coming up a few slides. Thank you, Rebecca. So back to Julia. Um, so this is the floor plan for the existing building, which is right here, and then the addition to the side. So now we've, we've rotated 180 degrees from the drawings that we were looking at um, before. And as I said, this is the existing front door. Um, and as you can see, there's a flight of stairs sort of immediately in front of you, which is how people currently get into the meeting room. The only change to the existing building is to add a covered portico on the outside of the building so that um, if people are exiting the building from this existing door, there's at least somewhere where you can stand and wait for a car to come get you or just not be dumped into the elements immediately. 
Um, the, the addition tries to respect to the front gable end of the existing building and frames in on the eastern side of the building, and I'll show you the roof plan, but it's a very simple gable roof, so it's just, it's essentially deferential to that existing building form and, um, and frames into the side of it perpendicular to the existing building. Uh, one thing that we really like about, um, about this approach is that the, the parking area, uh, one of the, the first comments from the architectural designer of Bold on the first design was that it placed a lot of parking right in, in between Pequot Trail and the building and created this, this sort of sea of parking between the road and the existing building, which, which didn't feel like the right approach. So in Rebecca and Sergio's approach, approach the parking is on the eastern side of the existed, existing building in addition and by turning the addition we're able to have the stairs off of the eastern parking area so that people who are coming from that parking state parking lot and people who might be using the ramp to come in are all coming through the same front door which i think is really important when you're when you're designing buildings for people um, it's nice that everyone uses the same front door, whether you're in a wheelchair with a walker or making it up on your own. Um, and then the layout of the of the dining room is very straightforward. It's just an open dining space that accommodates 74 seats, um, a men's room and a woman's room, each with with three um, either toilets or urinals and, and toilets. And then, as Sergio said, a kitchen that is primarily a heating space and a plating space, not a food prep space. Um, and then a front porch on the front that the ramp accesses. Uh, the, um, the, the Masonic group did not want to make a larger opening between the addition and the existing meeting room. So we are there's one three foot door that goes from the dining room into this waiting area and then into the existing meeting room. Um, and that is the only connection between the addition and the existing meeting room. And as Sergio said, the basement um, Space is being abandoned for all all things but storage. This is the roof plan, so this is very quick. But um, all of the overhangs on the existing building, the side overhangs are 20 inches, the front and rear overhangs are six inches. We are we are um, being true to those on the existing uh, on the addition as well. 20 inches on the back, six six inches on the front. We enlarge it on the street side so that the ramp is covered, so that when people are using the ramp to come into the building, they are also protected from the elements. And then this is the gable roof that I was mentioning, framing into the existing gable roof. And then there's a slightly uh, slow, uh, lower pitch on the, over the bathrooms in the kitchen. These are um, the east and the north exterior elevations. So the north elevation, this is the existing building. Um, and this is the portico that we're adding, and otherwise it remains unchanged. Um, the idea behind the, the, the north elevation of the addition is that it really steps back from the existing building and um, picks up on the window um, pattern. Window, the window dimension is identical, but um, that it really it highlights, it lets that front existing elevation um, be highlighted against the, the addition as it steps back. And then the east elevation of the addition takes its cues in directly from that existing north elevation, so it's very much a little brother to the original um, front elevation. And uh, this is where the, the roof pitch breaks between the dining room and the kitchen and bathrooms so that we again keep pick up on that gable proportion from the existing building. Um, this is the side elevation of the uh, the building, which is totally unchanged, and then the rear elevation um, with just access to the basement space. Um, in terms of materials, all of the building materials are getting replaced, so there'll be asphalt shingle roofing across the entire roof, certain teed vinyl um, shingles that will hopefully match the existing red cedar as much as possible, and then an exposed concrete foundation like the original. And now I'll give it back to Rebecca. Rebecca Nolan. Um, so I think this, this drawing is really just to give you guys an idea of what the, the top uh, view would be looking from the street. Um, or, I'm sorry, the, the top view would be looking from the new parking lot. 
Um, and so you can see that the, the idea is that you almost, it almost mimics the, the other side of the building. So we're really trying to connect those two with the um, new entry. And then the bottom elevation is just showing a view from the street. So we're looking at very simplified plantings. Um, the, the masons were really looking for something low maintenance. Um, we wanted to clean up around the um, building a little bit with some foundation plantings, um, mostly just to kind of hold the soil in and kind of decorate the front of the ramp um, that you would, you would see when you're pulling in. Um, but the majority of this uh, property is, is remaining natural. So the idea is that we're leaving as much of the natural vegetation as possible. Um, and you can see that in, um, in this rendering. That's mainly what this is meant to show. Um, I'm going to keep going to the planting plan. Um, I think there might be some more specific questions, but right now, um, you know, the street trees that we selected along the uh, parking lot are off of the street tree list or the parking lot list from Town of Stonington. They're, uh, they're oak trees. Um, there's a couple of, um, you know, flowering trees towards the back just to kind of clean up the edge of the woodland. Most of the woodland right now is, is uh, the edge is quite uh, filled with invasives. Um, part of that is from the septic construction um, and you know some of the other work that's been happening back there. Um, so we imagine that we'll need to clean up that area a little bit more. Uh, we're proposing a seed mix um, in the detention basin area. Um, so you'll see that on the plans. Um, it's a deer resistant mix. Um, all natural should be mowed twice a year, that type of thing. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, um, the buffering along the um, east and west sides, um, well, it's really the east and the, and the north side of this property. Um, you'll see the, the evergreen trees going in at six feet um, uh, at time of installation. And then along the front, there is a requirement for um, a buffer along the frontage. It's a 10-foot buffer. Um, we tried to keep these trees and shrubs fairly low. There's an existing sign in that area. Um, that the um, masons would really like to preserve. So that's um, kind of the proposal. And then just, as I mentioned, cleaning up around the edge of the woodland area. Um, there's a general uh, palette of some of the plants you might see. Most of them are, um, are wetland plants as well. So many of these are also in the seed mix that we've specified in the basin. Um, and I'm happy to answer more questions about plants. I'm going to go to the last slide here, thank you, and turn it over to Julia. Last, very quickly, these are um, the, the certainty shingles. They come in two colors, natural blend or cedar blend, and I think the masons will probably try to match either of these as closely to the red cedar as possible. Um, the bottom is just an example of, the, of what the railing on the ramp might look like. And the um, we had proposed that on the addition the, the foundation wall that is exposed to Pequot Trail and the eastern parking lot be clad in stone. But in the Architectural Design Review Board, one of the comments was the existing building has exposed concrete. Why, why, you know, why, why add a material that isn't already um, on your precedent? So I think we, we are happy to leave it off um, unless, unless there's you know, interest in putting a stone on. I think because they're the masons, they're, they do have a mason on as one of their members, and that, that was where the idea came from, but it was a comment that um, the Architectural Design Review Board didn't think was necessary. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Um, I do have a quick question. Is where does the crushed stone stop and start with the pavement? I couldn't find it on any drawings. Is it delineated somewhere? Could be. I think I need new glasses. Yeah, but I thought I heard. Oh. That's the heavy set. Yeah, that's the okay. Yeah. Got it. There's a there's a line that'll be crushed onto the south. Yep. Okay. And then I believe it's the In same delineation, more or less, over here. We actually have a trench drain to pick up the pavement before it hits this hit. slope because this slope is is relatively steep, so we don't want water cascading right. down it and running out. Right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Um, 
talks about the propane tank at the back of the parking lot. Is that a buried tank or on the surface? So that's going to be a berry tank, and I did fail to mention that we've uh, coordinated with the fire marshal. Uh, the only comment he had on these plans was to make sure that we included some bollard protection or otherwise something to block any cars from hitting that valve, but it will be a berry tank. Okay, that was the follow-up question. All right, thank you. So I have a question having to do with the dumpster. Okay. I mean, I look at the planting um, diagram. Are, are the plants between the dumpster and the parking lot versus the dumpster and Pequot Trail? Um, Rebecca Nolan. Um, so the the plants that you see just south of the dumpster, those are meant to just kind of block it from the parking lot. So just doing some minor screening. Um, the to the very north of the dumpster is a pretty heavily wooded area. Um, I probably should have mentioned that, that along the entire frontage of Pequot Trail, there's um, native trees, uh, large mature trees, um, and so we didn't feel that we needed to add any additional buffer in that area. Um, and so that's, the, that's kind of what's going to be screening it from, uh, from Pequot Trail. If you drive by now, you'll notice there's, um, it looks like a big, um, it's like a storage unit kind of tucked behind there that's around the area where that that dumpster will be so it's it's kind of tucked in the back um, to be out of sight as much as possible and then finally um the ramp on the side of the building so you've got inkberry going all along that ramp do you do you foresee the inkberry actually covering the railing the height of the inkberry yeah, it's a good question. Um, I believe that um, the plant we specified was the shamrock species, so it's really only supposed to get up to 24 inches max. Um, so you would still see some of the um, you would still see some of the exposed concrete on the ramp, which is I think what we were talking to the masons about a bit with the veneer um, possibility of along the foundation. Um, but all the plants along the frontage are meant to be as as small as possible. Um, so between 24 to 36 inch height max. Right. So you would see the exposed, whatever it turns out to be, foundation. And really, you would see all of the railing, the entire length, even though it's correct? Correct. correct. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Thank you. Are there any, uh, anybody want to speak in favor of this proposal? Okay. I believe, my name is Carlene Donnarumma. Um, I believe we have regulations that say the uh, dumpsters should be um, in in enclosed. And I can't tell from where I'm sitting and not seeing any other plants if that one is enclosed or not. Would you like to respond to that, please? Sure. Uh, the short answer is that it is enclosed. Um, there's a note to that effect, but I believe our detail. Oh, okay. Do you have it on your plan or is it on? We usually have the dumpster enclosure detail. There it is. Oh, so it is fenced in. Yeah, your regulations require That's it. Right. We, we have a typical detail. But right. um, I'm not sure what this one calls out. But uh, okay. white okay. cedar board. Like a stockade so, fence, right? Yeah. It's, okay. It's something that can't be seen through. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other general comments or opposition? Any other questions or comments from the commission? Just a, I guess a question perhaps for Keith. Taking up on Lynn's one about the lighting. I'm inclined to vote in favor of this application, but I wonder if we could do it 
ask the applicant to come back and, and go through their writing for that. Would that be appropriate? Yeah, that is something you could do where um, you could stipulate that the um, lighting plan comes back to you for review. It could be under the administrative review prior to them getting a zoning permit to construct it. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Great. No further questions. Keith, do you have a response um, report? Well, basically, the application conforms to the R80 zoning district. Um, it's been permitted as a community center, um, which is allowed in that zone. Um, the town engineer's comments were addressed, and he said all his comments were addressed in his last go round. Um, the application meets the parking requirements regardless of how you look at it. There's no real requirement or standard in zoning for something like this, like a community center or even a place of assembly. But whether you consider it a restaurant, a theater, or a place of worship, which is the three closest categories, it, it has a lot more than the required parking. Um, it was approved by the Wetlands Commission recently with a couple of routine stipulations, town engineer review, and uh, notifying staff um, prior to construction. Um, as the applicant said too, I mean the, the building design really did come a long way um, in, in maintaining the historic look of the building, and that's sort of a credit to the applicants and to the architectural review board who who uh, recommended going in that direction when there was an original proposal by others. Um, <coughs> Police Commission reviewed this, didn't find any public safety concerns. Um, and we talked about ledge light health district would have to ledge light health district would have to review the final uh, septic plan. Um, as far as the recommended stipulations for this, um, number one was just um, filing the final plans prior to getting a zoning permit. Number two was uh, erosion and sedimentation control bond. Number three was the applicant's engineer's uh, verification of um, drainage installation. Standard language we have for that. And there would be a number four, which is that um, lighting plan shall be reviewed by the commission under the under administrative review prior to issuance of a zoning permit. Review and approve. Yeah. Yes. Make a motion to approve the application. I think we've finished. Second. Do we need to close the meeting? Oh, Mr. Chairman, should we, should we move the waivers first? There's, there's actually nine waivers requested. Yeah, yeah. First. So we would, yeah, we'd have to close the hearing. Withdraw, maybe withdraw the motion. I do. We hear a motion to close the meeting. We can deal with the votes on the waivers. Motion to close the meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So moved. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the application subject to the four conditions that were just presented by the town planner, three that are stipulated in his memorandum, and the fourth being the lighting condition that the plans uh, come back to the commission for review and approval prior to the issue of this done. Very good. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Good looking building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
moving right along. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yes, please. There's a lot of fluff before we get into here. Okay. The following application PZ2124 SD and CAM, Oakwood Ave LLC. Subdivision of the Coastal Area Management Review application for a three lot subdivision of a 1.13 acre lot. Property located on Oakwood Ave Pocatuck Assessor's Map 5, Block 1, Lot 5, Zone RA 15. Thank you. So, see you tonight, same as before, same team Ryan Beasy, Chuck Shea, myself, Ben Philbert, Fred Diekman, and Lynn Conway and the same ground rules still apply so unless anybody needs to hear that again take it away uh, good evening my name is greg fettis with fettis engineering an office at 70 essex street in mystic connecticut uh, representing um, the owner of the property oakwood avenue llc and uh, probably most of you recognize this subdivision uh, we got it approved a couple of years ago um, uh, I guess given COVID and the confusion may be wrapped around um, extensions and state statute stuff and so forth, uh, we missed the deadline for filing. Uh, so we're back before you, um, same exact plan, um, the same exact waiver request, which is the sidewalk. Um, I can go through uh, the three lot subdivision, uh, a little over an acre parcel. Uh, all the parcels meet, uh, which is on the first sheet of your, your set, uh, meet all the zoning requirements uh, for size, uh, frontage, setback, uh, coverage, and so forth. Um, the second sheet actually shows the site development, and I'm going to flip over. Uh, Uh, so this shows three um, generic houses uh, located on, on each of the lots, one on each lot. Uh, simple driveway, uh, retaining walls, uh, separating the driveway to the front door. Um, they're all very similar. Uh, uh, we also have the stormwater management system, which is basically uh, underground infiltration on both sides of each lot which basically, uh, previously we, we were able to reduce the two, the 10 and the 25 year storms. Uh, this was reviewed um, and the review letters from the town engineer is in your, fold, in your file. Uh, we haven't, we have addressed them, but we didn't address them in time. Um, but we were able to, uh, he wanted the 50 and 100 year storms dealt with. Uh, so we did increase the size, they were already in my opinion, for a single family home, quite large. However, uh, we had to do a slight increase on all six of these separate infiltration systems in order to store and retain the 50 and 100 year storms. Um, we added a, and I think this was a recommendation that from the last meeting is the, the trench drain capturing uh, most of the runoff from the driveways and directing it back into uh, the underground infiltration. Uh, so I think we did a kind of a, I guess, above and beyond maybe on, on, a, on a single family home. We're just over an acre. If we were under an acre. We wouldn't necessarily have to go to this extent. Um, probably could accommodate that with some regrading and, and, and so forth. But uh, I think given the history of the site, uh, given the history of Oakwood Avenue and some of the issues uh, regarding drainage problems, uh, we chose to uh, go with the town engineer's recommendation, upsize our underground infiltration, um, and accommodate all of, all of the storms uh, that are in the uh, subdivision regs and technical standards. Um, again, this is more site specific than the first sheet which is the record subdivision but we uh, have a zoning table which basically shows uh, that we meet all the requirements of the subdivision regulations um, there's a shadow plan on the on the 
on this sheet um, uh, detail of the underground uh, detention. Um, I flip the sheet through three, which is the sediment erosion control, uh, which basically shows a anti-tracking pad uh, each driveway location, um, and then silt fencing and so forth uh, down along the down gradient. Um, everything kind of works its way, uh, I guess, towards the south, uh, towards Oakwood Avenue. Um, that's what it does now. It's what it will continue to do. Um, and again, I'm just going to read. I'm going to read after I get through the last sheet. I'll read the uh, the planning comments and the uh, accounting. Uh, again, these are the details: the underground infiltration, driveway details, anti-tracking pads, silt fence, uh, some of the trenching uh, we do have. I'm going to flip back to. The first sheet, we do have a sewer line that's going through our property to the adjacent property to the north. Uh, we were able to accommodate that with a uh, little bit of redirection, but an easement on our property that will grant um, So, yeah, uh, can you review that? Will that be relocated? Uh, just some portion that's on our property. So and you're putting it all on the we're, we're getting it to a common property line. Um, okay. So you can see it coming down. Uh, we're going to grab it there. We'll put a clean out it on our property uh, and direct it down across and into uh, the main. So it'll go in between the two houses. In between the two houses. Right on the next to a border? Or right well, uh, so it's a 20 foot easement. Um, there's a couple different theories. Okay. Some people like the line in the middle of the easement. Um, my preference is off to one side a little bit, so you can you can pile dirt up on on the other side. But uh, if the town engineer he he looked at it, it didn't have any comments. Uh, the previous town engineer looked at it, didn't have any comments. Okay. So I think uh, I think Doug Nettleton looked at it, didn't have any comments regarding that. So um, so I think that's uh, the gist of the application. I'll just. Uh, because I think the planning comments and the town engineer's comments made it to uh, the file. Um, it's gonna go. We did add the stipulations from the previous uh, approval to the first sheet, and I know they probably are going to need to be modified slightly. A couple of them uh, don't make sense anymore, but we'll. Well, I think we can take care of that in the stipulation. Um, I'm going to go through, let's see, the, look at the planning comments first. And that's uh, from Keith. Oh, I don't have it here. Okay. Uh, dated August 31st with a letter to myself. Uh, there's four items, application, application, Application must include a request for waiver of sidewalk requirement for section 5.35. I think, I don't know if that made it to the, we did send a letter. I have copies with me um, requesting that, but it's the same, the same request as the last time um, to waive the sidewalk requirement. There's not sidewalks in the neighborhood, and I think we concluded last time that that was a valid waiver. Uh, Number two, the drainage map shows rain gardens rather than underground infiltration. Uh, when we did the original um, drainage cuts, we had rain gardens. I think there was some dis debate uh, with our, you know, with the commission and maybe some of the neighbors that that's not maybe the best thing because uh, they don't get maintained and you know so forth. So we're not uh, going with rain gardens. We are not going with rain gardens. We're going with infiltration units. I was which are, about to say, didn't we agree on those? Yeah. We, uh, so we, we have within infiltration, but we didn't never change it on our drainage maps. Ah. So we, we would, we've done it, but we have not submitted it yet. We've agreed to that. Um, uh, number three, the previous commission approved stipulation that we have on sheet one, which I mentioned. Uh, they're most likely going to be slightly modified. Some of them, some of them will remain the same. Uh, number four, and this is just, I think, informational. Because we, uh, due to recent change in the zoning regs, retaining walls it can be upwards of uh, five feet now, right within the setback. 
and we, we complied with three foot before, so I think we're pretty good on that. Uh, then the town engineer's comments, which uh, is in the letter or memo dated 9-9, um, he had three comments. Uh, I kind of mentioned some of this already. Uh, number one is about the stormwater runoff, uh, that we achieved no net increase in stormwater to the, to the right of way uh, for all the storms to, to 100, uh, which we were able to do. Um, the survey, although we referenced the survey and the record subdivision is signed by a licensed uh, land surveyor, we'll submit the original land survey that was A2, uh, the A2 standards that have all the information. Um, and we also, uh, yeah, we have the survey, we have the easement with all the data that he requested on our, on our record subdivision, which is, I think, the appropriate place to put it, not on the original survey. Um, and then we revised a couple notes, uh, actually revised note D on the ENS plan, which just kind of said the zoning enforcement officer uh, needs to make sure all the ENS is in place. Um, and another note giving the name of the person in charge of maintenance of erosion and sediment control. So we're in agreement with all those. We've actually addressed them. We just have not submitted them yet because of the 15-day requirement uh, for public hearing submittal stuff. So uh, we're in agreement. Uh, I think, in fact, those can be uh, stipulated uh, that we comply with uh, the planner and the town engineer. We're in agreement with that. And unless there's any questions, I'd be happy to uh, turn it over to the public. Any questions? So this is this is uh, sounding vaguely familiar the first time it came in. Can you review the discussion on the sidewalk? So you said that there were no sidewalks in the neighborhood um, on either side of the street. There were no sidewalks. I, at least in this general area, I did not. I mean, there's. I don't think. I think we concluded there was not a connection uh, for the sidewalks. Uh, everything's developed on either side, so it's not going to get connected ever. Um, I think that's what we concluded. Okay. Thank you. Right. Good. Okay. Any comments from the uh, public in favor? Anyone opposed? General comments. I had a feeling you would be saying something at some point. Yeah, I know. <laughs> For the record, my name is Carmen. That's it. She dropped the mic. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll start again. For the record, my name is Carlene Donnarumo, and I do live on Oakwood Avenue. In regard to your concern about sidewalks, there are no sidewalks on either side of the street on Oakwood Avenue, and it's been that way for the last 54 years as I've lived here. The town does, however, own a 50 foot right of way where if at some future point in time is land behind, beyond Oakwood Avenue at the end of Oakwood Avenue is ever developed in these they might be tied with. But right now there are no sidewalks. If the neighborhood hood has no problem with your uh, waiving the sidewalk requirement. Good evening. I'm here tonight to make observations, comments, and some suggestions regarding this uh, um, application. The three lot subdivision on Oakwood Avenue before you tonight is presented as a new application, but in essence, it is really a revision of, pre of a previous application acted upon on May 26, last year, 2020, by this commission. Four of you were on that commission at that time and you may remember it it is resubmitted under a new llc but it is still the same developer 
Pierce Hall. He did not file the plans on the town's land records within the, the regular 90-day frame permitted in our regulations, nor was it filed by July 20th, 2021, this year, when the governor's executive offer, order allowing more time to file expired. So that's why we're here again tonight. This new application addresses one of the major concerns for our neighborhood, drainage and replacing the rain gardens with infiltration systems, also known as galleys. And by the way, incorrectly spelled on the plan. I would like to quote from the minutes of the 2020 public hearing. Quote, Mr. Rathbun and Mr. Sheehan re recommended placing rain gardens within underground galleys due to the maintenance concerns, as was already stated tonight. Driveways should also drain into these galleys. Mr. Fe Mr. Ferris stated that this could be accomplished. So I'm really confused because tonight he said that they connect, but I don't see any little lines of the driveway into the into the um, the galleries. So I would think you would want to make sure that those are connected. Okay. Uh, so. Maybe he can explain why there are no drives, where, but they, why they're not on the plan. And if they're not, I would ask you tonight to mandate that they again be uh, placed on the plan because our fear is that the water runoff from all the sloped, paved driveways will run onto Oakwood Avenue, causing problems, additional problems. Of even greater concern is the driveway runoff from lot two and three. Um, not only they will, will they be, the water runoff be entering the street, but will also be making their way onto the driveways of 16 and 22 Oakwood Avenue because the driveways of two and three are aligned with the driveways of 16 Oakwood Avenue and 22 Oakwood Avenue. To our way of thinking, your stipulation of a driveway tie-in to the galleys makes a lot of sense and would take care of assuring no net increase in stormwater to the town's right-of-way and these neighboring properties. While comparing the previous stipulations with the current proposed stipulation, I wonder why old stipulation number two regarding the requirement of an AutoCAD drawing is omitted. Perhaps that was an oversight in the town planner's report. So I, I suggest that that requirement of an AutoCAD drawing be added to the list of recommended stipulations. Another major concern with the previous application was the relocation of the sewer line that currently runs through proposed lot three and serves number 12 Johnson Street, which is north of it. This issue was brought to the town's attention long before the 2020 public hearing was held on May 26, and it is still not resolved. Sorry, the things just don't work very good anymore. The property owner of 12 Johnson Street could not be here tonight. But in an email to me, he states he is pleased that, rec that recommended stipulations number three and four, which pertain to the sewer line, are included. However, he has an ongoing concern with monitoring for compliance and other issues. Similarly, Mr. Nettleton, head of the Water Pollution Control Authority, states in his review, and I quote, because this is a sewer lateral and not a sewer main, there is a greater risk for need for repairs to the line in the future. The concern would be construction of a fence or planting of trees or a privacy hedge, which would make any repairs to the line an issue." End quote. To address this issue, 
I suggest that you add another stipulation to the list that the D of both lots two and three where the Eason exists specifically mentions the 10 foot wide sewer Eason on their property and state that nothing be planted or placed in that 10 foot area. Much to our chagrin, the developer has not proposed to tie into the fairly new gas line on Oakwood Avenue. Is it because of the cost of digging a trench? Or is he planning to go all electric? Because there is electric service to the house, obviously for lighting. Both of those options seem much safer for the neighborhood than the previous proposed propane tanks. Perhaps this Devetis Pettis can explain what is actually proposed for heating and cooking. If it is still propane tanks, I say, buyer beware. Of course, the prospective buyer should be made aware of this, and I hope that they do do that before they sign on the line. Work on the vacant wooded, wooded lot that the neighborhood considered open space until now was started last November with the felling of trees, piling of debris, and digging up large amounts of stone. Three loads of lumber were trucked away off the property, but many, many felled trees, and today I counted at least 150 trees, felled trees, are still lying on the property, as does piles of debris and lots and lots and lots and lots of stone rocks. Even after a large pit was filled with rocks on lot one, no work was done during the winter. The excavator was removed from the property this spring, and the neighborhood is left with a mess and an eyesore. We look forward to Mr. Fettis' explanations of why there are no driveway tie-ins that appear to be, anyway, when I look at those site plans, and what is proposed for heating and cooking on these lots. Finally, we encourage you to embrace all the recommended stipulations as possibly amended and add the three that I have suggested concerning the AutoCAD drawings deed restrictions on lot two and three and requiring the driveways to be connected to the galley if that be necessary or if, it, if i'm not reading it correctly then then it's my error hopefully mr hall will avoid cookie cutter houses proposed on the 2020 and 2021 plans and add to our neighborhood houses that are more in character with what exists in our neighborhood. Thank you for your attention. I am going to give, I would like my comments edited into the record, and I'm going to give each of you a copy of my my comments for your consideration. Great, thank you. I'll try to push it in further this time when I put it back. So uh, to address the trench drains, there's a note uh, located right below the right over here. It says proposed trench drain, trench drain to collect stormwater from driveway to be piped to gallery or galley. So that's located right here, and the same note is duplicated on every driveway, and then there's a dashed line from the trench drain to the galley. Well, that because it's going over here. Uh, no, this one's going into here. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, I guess as for the heat, I did not discuss that with my client, so I'm not sure that's a relevant subdivision question. If I had the answer, I would I would give it, but I I don't. So electric, you know, there's there's advances in the electric heat pump systems now. I don't I don't know, to be honest with you. I can find out. You can make it a stipulation that I tell you what the heat is, but if that's necessary. I think those are probably the only two things I needed to address. AutoCAD drawing? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that was on previous. I think it's still on ours. It's still on there from our stipulation. It's a requirement, or we got to pay someone else to digitize, so yes, we'll okay. grant you. that. Yeah. You know, the AutoCAD drawings, I believe it was already done last time. Um, it was provided by Mr. Fettis when the plans were on the way to being recorded, and the boundaries of the subdivision haven't changed. So the point of that is just so we can give it to the um, consultants who update the town assessors, the tax assessors maps, just so we can have the new boundaries. Um, for GIS and the tax map. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as last time, the, the application it conforms to the subdivision regs and the zoning regulations here. Um, there are some changes to the stipulations from last time, and a lot of that's just based on the comments we received. Um, where last time this was reviewed by our engineer and consultant, this time it was re reviewed by our town engineer who had a slightly different take on it wanted a little bit more information about um, making sure that the stormwater, you know, won't overflow into the street or the neighbor's homes who just wanted some more verification on that. Um, and the WPCA director did have some comments where he wanted to review the final placement of the easement and the easement language for that sewer line going to the property and back. Um, he seemed a bit concerned with the placement of the sewer line within the easement. He preferred it to be in the middle of the easement, um, but that detail can be can be worked out. Um, the stipulation could say that the deeds of both lots two and three mention the sewer easement. I think deeds would usually do that, but there's no harm in. Uh, well, the next question we can request that. Yeah, yeah, that could be. It makes there. sense to me. It's a sewer line. Right. You need to have as a fence well post. As I, I think the easement language is standard, so I think it's a very good point that, that uh, Carlene brought up. I, I think that it's it's handled in the sewer easement language. There's yeah. stipulations that you can't put a permanent structure and you can't make modifications within the easement. So, so the town has ample uh, enforcement language in the deed uh, in that reserved easement that's recorded on the land record. So. I, I don't think there's any harm in restating it okay. unless we contradict something that's in the regulations. Yeah. And then we then we got an issue because I, I think you raise a valid point, but I think the protection already exists. So Yeah. And that's why I wouldn't want to be too specific in a stipulation, yeah. just have a general referral exactly. to it. Exactly. Because they'll have tons of detail about what you can and can't do. Um you have a question, sir? Um it is this is a CAM application also, and we didn't receive DEP comments this time, but we there's nothing different from their original comments in which they, they didn't really have any issue with this. Um, there really aren't any sidewalks anywhere in this area, and it's a very low traffic dead-end street here. Um, and yeah, just to go over the recommended stipulations. Number one is just the fee in lieu of open space language. Um, and by the way, the recommendation for the fee in lieu of open space was granted again by the Conservation Commission this time around. Um, number two is the erosion and sedimentation control bond. Um, number three, the final location language of the sewer easement shall be subject to WPCA review and recorded prior to or concurrent with the subdivision plans. 
Uh, number four, as built plans for the relocated sewer line shall be provided to the town prior to issuance of the zoning permit for construction of lot three. Number five, larger trees in the area between lots one and two shall be retained. Number six, final plan shall be modified to achieve no net increase in stormwater to the town right of way and our neighboring properties as determined by the town engineer. Number seven, boundary markers shall be established and verified as installed on the final plans prior to filing on the town's land evidence records. And number eight would be um, deeds of lots two and three shall, speci uh, shall specifically reference the sewer easement. We're not in a position to say they have to hook up to the gas, are we? That's no, it's really not a something we that kind of regulate. Um, you know, the building official, when the time comes, will make sure that what they're doing meets all codes. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Do you have information? Yes, sir. Is this how the AutoCAD is, is the plan that uh, uh, he bought at the town hall, the very latest plan, the one that he was using tonight, is that the one that's on AutoCAD? It is, because it really just, it really just is about the lot boundaries. So if certain little things change in the plan, it really wouldn't affect that. I'm just concerned that the drink and stuff is like connection. Right, and that um, that one of had files. It's really just um, it's not uh, pictures of all four plans, all four site plans that are presented tonight. No, it's really just for the lot boundaries. Is really the only purpose of it. It doesn't have the details of the construction. So right, right. All right. All right. I was not aware. Thank you. Because yeah, the final plans will be recorded with the town clerk, and that would have all the details on it. Okay. And the engineer has to sign off on that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Eight situations now, correct? Uh, yes. And, uh, ma'am, were you looking to uh, comment? Hey, I think I'd be talking to you. Hey, he's talking to you. He wants to talk to yeah. you. Yeah. Can you bring the mic? He's going to bring the mic to you, Kay. What? Sit down. He's bringing oh. you the mic. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'll just be brief, but um, my name is Catherine Perone. I live at 12 Oakwood Avenue, across the street from the projected um, proposed project. Um, I could not see the houses that were, because um, everything was to our back. But um, I think the speaker, the presenter, said there was going to be three houses all the same. That is not compatible with our neighborhood. My husband and I bought our home in 1962. The house we live it, the house the street is a dead end street, and um, it's a neighborhood, quiet, and every house on the street is different. So three houses on a 1.3 acre lot all the same is not compatible with what we now live in live have um it's been a nice neighborhood to live in we've enjoyed it and um we hope we can continue to do so thank you very much thank you Any other comments? You all wrapped up, Keith? We have uh, three votes. Right? Yes, I mean, it, it's it's true, it would be good if they could be have a different 
designed to them. It's not something we regulate where the commission of the town doesn't uh, review the design of, of single family houses. It would make sense to I shuffle think, it up. I think what the applicant so what the applicant's engineer said was for the purposes of the plan, he showed three typical houses. I don't think it means that the developer is going to build three exactly. We, we have no control of that. I mean, there is no architectural review over that. But, uh, I think what you said was that that the subdivision plan shows three buildable squares exactly the same, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that the ultimate houses are going to conform to that exact square or that exact size. They have to conform to zoning and they're whatever the owners want to build that complies with zoning. Of course, of course, I can uh, color or twist to you know, roof lines or something like that. But I will bring back the message uh, to the developer slash owner. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know his intention also, but he might just sell them off as buildable lots to three individual people who might build their own houses. Okay. So Keith, it's it, the application requires a waiver approval. These are separate, separate. Right. A waiver approval, a coastal area management application approval, and a subdivision application approval. Three right. Separate motion. Yeah, and the um, the waivers require a supermajority four out of five vote. Right. And that's just for the sidewalks, correct? Yeah, that was the only one. Okay. Your motion to close the meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting closed. How would like people like to proceed with the vote? Let me start with the first one on the sidewalks. Make a motion to approve the waiver for the sidewalk. That's articulated by Charles. Second. Second. I'll try to make a motion to approve uh, the waiver on the sidewalk with uh, Dr. Davis. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All five in favor? Yes, sir. Okay, there's a super majority. Number two, the CAM application. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the CAM application for this subdivision. I can move. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any discussion? So moved. And lastly, the subdivision, the CP. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the subdivision subject to the eight stipulations, uh, seven which are contained in the report, and the one additional stipulation uh, that, that Keith just mentioned with regard to uh, the deeds on two lots, uh, stipulating that the uh, sanitary sewer easements, or the lots are subject to uh, restrictions under the sanitary sewer is plus two and three correct second all those in favor aye aye oh so move thank you no top stamp this time you want to close the meeting meeting closed and adjourned thank you